Hello everyone, welcome to a new video and as the title said this is the scariest video I've ever done out of 494 videos. <laughs> yeah this is the one that I'm the most nervous to put out there because this is going to be a rundown of all the pieces of art I've got available. If you've been around this year you'll know I've been taking an art course so this is definitely all work that is sort of very eclectic. I've been trying lots of different styles, doing lots of new things, oil painting for one I've never done before and also not necessarily in my style for some of it. So because of that the prices are quite low. I hope you think they're fair. It was very difficult for me going through them trying to figure out what would be the right level. I think I've got it right but yeah after I've done the portfolio section I should be able to lift those a little. <laughs> this is really uncomfortable and awkward to talk about. We oh dear we need to we just need to get better at this don't we? Um, I think yeah anyway this might take a while if you saw the video where I was sorting through them you might have realized you might realize that I have a lot of paintings to go through so I'm gonna put you up on the overhead tripod here put all the work on the desk and just talk you through them briefly and quickly below in the description I'll list everything with all the information as long as I've got enough characters available if not I'll have to link to somewhere that you can see and if there is anything you'd like to buy then send me an email to helen at threadsofafairytale.com and uh, I will sort it out uh, yeah here we go okay I'm doing these in size order so actually my more recent work which is mostly bigger is going to be last but there we are and some of my earlier work is first actually so perhaps that works out fine so I'm just going to say what the piece is called so that you can find it on the list below if you're interested and everything will be listed in order of me saying it here hopefully if anything looks wrong do just let me know so this one's called Thirlmere because that was the name of the reservoir that we went to. This was from a photograph I took on our Lake District holiday quite a few years ago now actually. It was a really beautiful place but we went in February so it was quite bleak but it was still nice. And that's the second one. So the first one I was trying I think watercolour and ink and then this one is more mixed media. We've got some ink tents going on in there as well. So this one is called Thelmere 2. <laughs> some of these titles I'm afraid were not very imaginative. She is called Punky Fairy, which is quite sweet actually. And that is based on a photograph of Jude that I took for Threads of Fairy Tale and I just added some big wings. She's called Green a Fairy, and again, it was another Threads of a Fairy Tale photo shoot. Very useful to have all those references that I can use for art. Again, added the wings. This is Autumn at Godrevy, again from one of my trips. We go there all the time in the camper van. All of our camper van holidays in Cornwall always end up at Godrevy so I think there's quite a few there and will probably be more in the future as well. This is simply called September Beach and honestly I can't remember which beach it's based on. It might well be Godrevy but uh, just looking out to sea. And this one is called From Godrevy because we're looking from there over towards St Ives is sort of over there. And this one's towards Gwythian which again is the sort of beaches a bit more to the left from a very similar position. This one is Golden Hour at Perrinpore from one of our camper van trips. The light was just stunning, it really was. It was actually much pinker than I've painted it here. It would look like a fantasy scene if I'd done it. <laughs> it just didn't look real, you know, it was one of those times where the light was just amazing, it just didn't look real. But um, yeah, so there we are. This one is dusk at Perrinporth. Same trip, we'd just walked along and come back and the sun was setting lower. I think I caught the atmosphere quite well there. This one is Morning Lake and I called this one Art Happening because I thought it was a quite a nice sort of snapshot of art supplies being used. And this is the first oil painting so far. All of these have been either watercolour or water soluble media. This one's called Kingfisher. <laughs> I wonder why. Yeah, this is one of my first oil paintings and I was so proud of it. I thought it came out really quite beautifully actually. And she's Angel. Yeah, this was um, having a go with limited palette, also in oils. Black Cat. <laughs> 
and I've just called this desk study. These are little still lives we did a la prima. I thought even though they were fairly quick studies, I still thought they came out quite well and would look nice on the wall. So this is Rose's study and office study. This one is Wolf Watching, another oil paint painting. This is Goodrevy Beach. This is experimenting with a sort of more abstracty, loose style, but I, I enjoyed the way it came out. This is Autumn Squash. This is Venice at Dusk. This is called How is Lady Pole? So this is a character from Jonathan Strange and Mr Norrell and she has had a spell cast on her by an evil fairy where, where she can't speak the truth so the spell manifests as a, a rose at her mouth so she can't talk and tell people what's happening, the curse that's happening to her. I love that story. I really focus on the eyes on this one. This is Scotney Castle. It's a lovely National Trust place um, in Kent and we went to visit a couple of years ago with my mum. Yeah, it's really pretty there. This is Glastonbury Abbey. That's not far from where I live and I do visit it, to be honest, when it's free. <laughs> I would say this one is actually one, uh, what they might call a breakthrough piece. So when I first experimented with these more unrealistic colours and mixing a sort of abstract background with realistic elements, I think that really sparked, sparked joy in, in me and I realised that this was a style I definitely wanted to pursue. This one is called Beekeeper and this was my first go with gouache actually and I was so delighted by how vibrant the colours are. They came out so beautifully. I was uh, really impressed. This one is called Through the Prism. It was literally a photograph I took of a hydrangea holding a prism and it created all these little rainbows. Yeah, I thought that was really pretty. This one is called Light in the Trees and this is based on some woods in Cornwall that we visit a few times called, to, I think it's Tidy, to Hidi or to Heidi, <laughs> to Heidi Woods and there's the light coming through. So this one's called One Lifetime. I'm going to put the exact quote on the screen because I can't remember it off the top of my head. But it's where, hopefully it's obvious, it's Liv Tyler and she's playing Arwen in Lord of the Rings. And she says to Strider, I would rather spend one lifetime with you. And then I can't remember the rest of the sentence, I'm sorry than a thousand years without you or something along those lines. Anyway, I liked it. I, 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 oh dear, I feel terrible that I can't remember that. But um, yeah, one lifetime I thought would be the ideal quote for that one, that piece. This is Sunset at Godrevy. And yeah, again, an exper experimenting with lots of mixed media and really getting quite thick with certain types of paints and crayons and things down here. and. Yeah, I just loved the contrast with the yellow and the purple as well. This is Hales Abbey. We went and visited this year on a camper van trip in the spring. A really magical place. And this was sort of an experiment with mark making in the in sort of in the background and again trying to mix a bit of realism with abstract. Yeah, it was fun that one. This one is simply Stonehenge. Again, uh, practicing with mark making in the background so we've got sort of a completely abstract background with Stonehenge in the middle and oil paint. I have reduced this one because unfortunately we've got a crease just in the corner but hopefully once it's framed and up on the wall it won't really notice particularly if you do a, a wide mat. This is Magnolia Branch. I just loved how the background turned out really painterly quite a lot it reminded me of Monet's water lilies. I love the colours, it's really pretty as well. And this one is called Summer Rose. I just like the warmth of the petals, which reminded me of summer. This one is Spring into Heidi Woods. You might not notice at first, but there are large bluebells making, doing some mark making in the background, and as well as the, the bluey lilac bluebells in the foreground. Again, from a photograph at to Heidi Woods when we met my sister there on holiday last year, I think. So I think I captured some of that spring morning light. This one is November Woods because you've got that some those deep autumny colours sort of verging into winter, but still some leaves around. Yeah, I like this one. This was our spray painting experiment, so we've got lots of spray spray patterns going on, which I really love. Plus, of course, a little bit of metallics. And I decided to call her Thinking of You. I thought I thought that was a good title for her. And, and this one was about letting the brush strokes show and 
blending skin tones and I did think she was deep in thought so I thought that was a good title. Here we have Glastonbury Tour drawing one and Glastonbury Tour drawing two. So we're now onto the ones I've done on A2 sized paper and these are the ones I've backed onto board and varnished. So yeah lots of experiments with mixed media here we've got texture paste we've got gold leaf flakes yeah it's a good fun one this one and this one is called earth keeper again loving all the abstract backgrounds and lots of textures and crackle paste and this is a good fun one as well this is one of my favorite ones actually i think i got the figure really well this one is among the rocks and this is me sort of experimenting with more of an ethereal feel so it almost looks like she's a spirit walking among the among the rocks there this one is feel the power Sort of feeling the power of the waves but also stances like the power pose and you know just feeling strong and feeling strong against the tide you know I thought there was a little bit of a, a double meaning to that one as well it's a shame I'm showing these in daylight there's actually a lot of sparkle in some of these that don't show until you put the lights on in the evening which is quite nice you've got that extra sort of surprise at night but yeah these little texture paste bubbles are metallic which is quite fun this one is glastonbury tour in summer we've got wild roses in the foreground and a very magical interesting sky this one is the escape there's a quite a cool story going on with her with the fairy holding the key is she escaping from something and about to go through the door is she about to rescue somebody else by letting them out of the door I thought that's quite a nice sort of implied narrative that and the you the viewer can make up your mind exactly what's going on this one is very metallic the blue is very metallic at night which is really pretty doesn't show up at all now which is a shame but I did think showing the colors in daylight would give you the best representation this one is called an explosion of joy so in this one i was experimenting with sort of unrealistic proportions of the flowers who've so got giant flowers sort of surrounding her and yeah just i just thought it looked very joyful this one i've called city dreams abstract lots of texture in this one and yeah texture pastes and these little tiny art stones they're called and i really like the sort of color story in this one this one is a memoration of starlings a little bit more abstract here but there are some tiny little birds up in that corner and you can sort of feel the murmuration as they move across the sky so yeah i like that one okay we are now on to the canvas boards which i'm going to have to sort of move up and down a little bit so you can see the whole picture so this one is four for a boy there are four crows and if you know the there's a sort of rhyme uh, one for sorrow, two for joy, three for a girl, four for a boy. I think it's for magpies, really, but magpies are a type of crow, so it's fine. It's got one, two, three, four, plus you hold, there are four white large daisies in the picture. So I did like that title. And this is oil paint on board. Again, these are all varnished and ready to frame and hang. They, I'll just quickly show you, this is the frame it fits. So you can sort of have some idea of what it will look like. There we go. All varnished, you don't need glass, so you don't have to worry about reflections. And then you just slot the backing board that comes with most frames. So you've got a hanging hook there already. So this one I struggled with the title actually, other than just calling it a stag, which seemed a bit boring. And I thought he looked quite proud, sort of looks gazing over his land. Um, so I've just sort of called it I'm here, sort of to say, look at me, I'm here. But if I change my mind on that title, then I'll put it up on the screen. But yeah, I quite like the title, I'm here. Yeah, I was quite proud of that. That was my first really big oil painting. This is called Where Chrysanthemums Grow because I've got them sort of falling off of her as she goes. So it's like she is growing the chrysanthemums that are then dotted around the picture. That was sort of my thoughts behind it and we've got some gold leaf in here again not sure if, if it's going to show in the light maybe a little right the battery lights flashing we've got three to go let's get on with it this one is called feeling the flight and one of my viewers got it spot on she said it's like she's about to turn into the spirit of a bird and fly away and I thought yeah 
that's it that's exactly it and I've got all the silver leaf flakes to sort of show the motion add a bit of motion to help uh, with the atmosphere of the, the wind you get at the top of the cliffs this one is the dance goes on and I meant that in the sense that she is dressed up for a, a fairy tale ball and it's the next morning early morning and she's resting and then these butterflies come out of the window of the ruined castle and and sort of dance up into the sky and so the dance goes on that's sort of my thoughts behind that one <laughs> and lastly i struggled with getting making a small title for this one and i've called it tempted to step into the circle because of course the the legend has it that if you step into a fairy ring of mushrooms you'll get transported to fairyland possibly never to come back again and I thought it looked like she was tempted to step into the middle there and she was distracted as she was on her way that's the way she should go but she was tempted to step in the middle <laughs> so that's the story behind that title this this one is quite abstract and atmospheric I do like the colours in this one too and there we are that's it that's all of them <laughs> well there we are there's everything it's quite fascinating seeing the sort of journey, if you like, of my art and how it's developed. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed seeing all the pictures and do let me know if there's anything that takes your eye, takes your fancy, maybe treat yourself to a Christmas present. And I will see you again soon for a, a regular vlog. Take care, everyone. Thank you so much for watching. If you've got this far, thank you. <laughs> And obviously if none of this is for you, another way of supporting my channel would be to give it a thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't done already. And please, please, please share the link with your friends or on your social media. That would be hugely appreciated. Thank you very much. Bye.